What's up everyone? So today I'm just going to literally do Anki in front of you for about 10 minutes because I think a lot of you have questions about how I do Anki, um, how exactly it works. So I figured the best way to do it is to just show you how I exactly I go about it. One thing that I would recommend, however, is if you have not watched any of my other Anki videos, please click on the playlist below or I'll also link it right above up here and watch all of those before watching this one because otherwise a lot of this stuff just won't make any sense. But aside from that, let's get to it, showing you um, how I do Anki on a day-to-day -day basis. Let's go. All right, what's up guys? So today I figured you can just watch me do Anki for five to seven minutes and see exactly how I go about doing it because sometimes the best way to learn is to just observe. Um, and I've gotten a lot of questions about how I do Anki, so I figured this would be the best way to do it. Um, so just straight off the bat, you'll see that this is my main deck. This is my one legend deck. This is the only deck I do. It has everything I need to know. And you'll see that I have 760 due today and I have 91 new cards. It's the weekend. So it's the weekend today. The reason why I have more cards than usual is because I slacked off during the week. So I just kind of have to catch up today. And also I have more new cards than usual. I usually don't have 90 new cards almost ever. The reason I have 90 is because again, I said it's the weekend and I usually try to integrate new cards into my deck over the weekend because during the week, there's just so much going on that I can barely even meet my reviews. But in, in the weekend, I actually have enough time that I can integrate all my reviews in and get some new cards in so I can actually be um, actively learning new content, all the while retaining everything I've learned in the past. You'll also see that I have two big sub parts of my one legend deck. There's a clerkship deck, which as I said, clerkships are when you're in the hospital and there's always stuff I'm learning in the hospital. And that's stuff that I would want to make sure I know for, you know, day to day clerkship life. And my second deck is for preclinical. Preclinical tends to be a lot more knowledge. It tends to also be more stuff that's relevant for the USMLE board exam. And both of these are important. Clerkship is important because I need to make sure residents know that I know what I'm talking about. But I also need to make sure that um, I know my stuff for the USMLE. So you'll see that in both cases, I have a breakdown in that way. And I kind of prioritize, first of all, during, during the week, I almost inevitably prioritize this deck, my clerkship deck, because it has everything I'm learning on clerkships. So I don't want to look stupid on clerkships. So I will almost inevitably try to finish this deck first because it has high yield information that I need to know day to day. But secondly, in my preclinical deck, there's three subtypes that don't, I wouldn't pay too much attention to this, but the point is uh, my main content deck within my preclinical is this master sketchy deck. And that's because that has all of sketchy farm, all of sketchy micro, and I'm slowly adding in more and more stuff that I find, including osmosis videos and boards and beyond. So you'll see it kind of includes everything um, that I've completed. Um, in Sketchy, and it also includes some of the osmosis videos I've included in here, some of the Boards and Beyond stuff I've included in here, and every day I'm adding a bit more on and on. This one only has 4,000 cards about, uh, and my whole one Legend deck, if you add everything up, um, has about, I think, at this point, 12,100 cards. So I, as I said, I'm trying to keep up with this on a daily basis, and you'll also see at the bottom today I've done 462, but on average I usually do around 713 reviews. But as I said, already you know that my priority is my clerkship deck because that's stuff that I do day to day. And my second priority is my master sketchy deck because that has some high yield USMLE content that if I were to triage, I'd triage my clerkship deck and my master sketchy deck. These two other decks are from class. This one is um, Neuro and this one's Obigain. I don't pay that much attention to them. I do try to get through them, but I try to get through them just really fast. I just try to make sure I know my stuff, but I don't pay as much attention to it as I do to my clerkship and my master sketchy. For today, you'll see that I've already finished my clerkship deck, and you'll see that I've always make sure I finish my reviews first. So I think it should be in Anki preferences. Um, and when you go to preferences, it'll just say show new cards after reviews. I always do my reviews first. It is very, very important that if you are trying for long-term retention, you always prioritize reviews before adding in new stuff. You add in new stuff and you can't even keep track of the stuff you've already learned. That's a horrible formula. On the other hand, if you do your reviews first, then you'll be pretty set um, to then add in new information. So I always do my reviews first. You'll see that here I've finished my reviews and I've kind of held off on my new cards. And in my Master Sketchy deck, I'm working on my reviews. So let's let's do that now. Three major findings, hyperkeratosis, uh, parakeratosis, and I don't know the last one, maybe dysplasia. So let's see. Oh, okay. So these three are right. Uh, as you see, this is actually from a pre-made deck. I'll talk about this deck. I think it's the Lightyear deck. Um, and I got this one right. And as I said, this always has enough information for me to understand it. So I say, okay, good. I know this card. Adverse effect of opiates. There's six of them. Um, constipation, pupillary constriction, um, biliary colic, um, 
opioid-induced hyperalgesia. Um, and there's two more. Oh, yeah, respiratory depression and CNS depression. Okay, so you see I got all all, ten, all six, so keep going. Does alcohol bind to the same allosteric site as benzodiazepines? No, it doesn't. Um, and you'll see here, this one is also from a pre-made deck. This one is from the pe pe Pepper Sketchy deck. And the good part about it is if you use Sketchy, it includes everything in the Sketchy that's relevant to the actual card. And if you wanted to see more about this topic, it includes the actual first aid passage that's relevant. And this really helps because, as I said again, when I'm looking at a card, I want to not only be able to answer it, but if I want to know more information, I need a direct reference to where I can get it. And right here is the first aid thing to it. But I already knew this one, so that's great. Let's move on. What are the indications for an SSRI or an SNRI? So you have depression. Um, you have post-traumatic stress disorder. You have panic disorder. And you have generalized anxiety disorder. So you have those four. Um, and you see right here, I got all four. This one, again, as I said, it takes you to the particular parts about Sketchy that were relevant here. And for those of you who don't know what Sketchy is, Sketchy Micro is just an online animated um, tool that med students use to learn a lot of these things. I'll probably do a review on it later on, but if you have questions about it, let me know in the comments. But as I said, this too has a see more, and that's why I love this pre-made deck, the Pepper Sketchy deck. Um, I'll include it in the link below, but it's amazing. Um, so I knew this one. Let's keep going. Indications for Etomidate. Uh, induction of anesthesia. Yeah, see, there we go. As I said, this includes everything. Keep going. What hand joints are classically affected by osteoarthritis? It, impl it impacts these joints, which are the DIP joints. It impacts these joints, which are the PIP joints. And it also impacts this joint, which is the carpal metacarpal, first metacarpal, first carpal metacarpal joint. Okay, see, I was right here. As I said, so this is a card that was actually a Zonky card. Zonky is another deck. So as I said, there's a lot going on here. And as I said, sometimes the best way to get grab a hold of this, I know it's a little overwhelming, is to just watch someone do it. And I can show you all of these. But this is a Zonky deck. And I've imported this this card from the Zonky deck. But as you see, I've actually included my own screenshots from the Boards and Beyond material. So that way, I actually know what's going on and what it's referring to. If I was just looking at this first part right here, if I was just looking at this, this is this is really hard. And as you see, I kind of have... I kind of have a mnemonic here. Osteoarthritis happens in old people at the end of their lives and therefore affects the end joints. And that's why I kind of have this mnemonic, um, which is kind of smart. I made that up on my own. Almost every one of these cards has something like that to really help with my memory retention if I want to look at it. So I, I knew this one. Let's see it again in one day. I always inevitably press two. I almost inevitably press the middle button. So you'll see on here, I print control Z. I almost inevitably press good. Um, it says, what microorganisms are often the cause of hematologically spread septic arthritis? Notice this small addendum here, the times two. These, the most of the cards, this is a pre-made card. This is from the Lightyear deck, I think, but they don't often include this. So I always add it on myself because it adds more clarification. It tells me I'm looking for two answers. In this case, it's Streptococcus pneumoniae and um, I'd say Staph aureus. Those are the two. Uh, and as I said right here, and there's the screenshot from the actual video where this, this question was pulled from and the part from first aid that's relevant. Um, the good part about the light year deck is that this part is often in it already. I often add this in when I watch the relevant boards and beyond video, and that really helps me. So that's just my take on it. Uh, and it really puts everything into context. What correlates with the risk of metastasis and melanoma? Um, usually it's the ABCDEs, I think is, is probably the truth. But I think this question specifically is talking about the depth of invasion. So yeah, this one's right. Let's keep going. As I said, each of my cards, if you go all the way down, they have so much thorough information on them that if I really wanted to and I got pissed off, I could learn the whole topic again and I'd be fine. But for the most part, I'm, I'm going pretty fast. What x-ray findings are present in patients with osteoarthritis? You have narrowing or joint space. Um, you have osteophytes and then you have... Um, I don't even know the last one. So I actually don't know this one. You'll notice. But you'll notice how I have the times three here. Uh, you also notice how each one of my cards is very short, succinct, and to the point. I almost inevitably keep it that way. Most of my cards are for pre-made decks. It saves me time and it keeps my, my information high yield. But the good part is the only place where it takes time is each of these cards. I always add in extensive background information. So that way, if and when I want to relearn it, I can. And that is huge for me. That really helps me. Um, so even though I use pre-made cards, I make the pre-made cards in a way that they actually really help me understand the material. Um, so I think I'll stop the video there. If you guys like these, I can do more of these and kind of um, 
overview how exactly I'm learning a lot of these things. But I think the big things we learned today were, um, one, keeping your questions very nice and concise. Two, um, I have a lot of cards. And it's important to do your reviews before your new cards because if you don't do it that way, you will definitely screw yourself up. So definitely do your reviews before your new cards. And um, I think the other thing we learned was every card, as you saw, inevitably has a bunch of background information in it. And that's kind of what helps me uh, keep everything uh, together. And that's how I'm managing 12,000 cards in my head because every time I want to relearn something, I don't have to look it up. It's right there on the card. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you actually did genuinely enjoy this video, you do like seeing how uh, med students go about using Anki because this is it. Like I'm a med student. I'm in the peak of my step studying because I'm going to take it next year. I'm also in the peak of my clinical year. So I'm trying to learn as much as possible. I'm supposed to be learning a lot and I actually feel like I'm, I'm getting there. Um, this is how I'm doing it. So hopefully this was in insightful for you. If it was, tell me why. If it wasn't, tell me why. If there's specific questions, this question, this video brought up, please mention them below. But aside from that, thanks for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.